Let's open right now by saying hello to John Mosey. Like, how you doing, Mo? Hey, Bernie. How are you? Been a I'm while. doing all doing all right. Can you can you? Uh, I, I don't. I didn't see a release. Is they is the uh, Keenan Middleton move? Uh, is that official? Or can you talk about that? I cannot. It is not official yet. Well, I hope there's no issues there with the physical. But uh, anyway, for whatever it's worth. <laughs> I, I, I think he fits. Uh, I think he fits the profile you've been looking, and, and in general, you've put a uh, you and the staff have put a priority on finding some strikeout punch, uh, adding depth to your bullpen. You've got some guys you've brought in that have upside. Uh, I know you can't talk about Middleton, but uh, if this, if in fact this goes through, you can talk about at least right now before it goes through. Um, how you think uh, you, you're in better shape in the bullpen going into 2024? Well, I think the biggest difference is what we're able to do with our starting pitching. Um, I think last year we put a lot of pressure and stress on our bullpen. We had a lot of uh, short outings by some of our starters, and I just think uh, it became really a, a cumulative effect on, on how our relievers held up throughout the season. And I, I think this year – getting quality starting innings is going to be a big help. And I think if we are able to do that, that automatically is going to improve our, our, the strength of our bullpen. And again, I'm, it, it, I'm at a disadvantage because uh, I, I can't really introduce Middleton factually into the dis- discussion, but with what uh, with, with the, you and the staff have done so far this off season, I mean, I think Kittridge is a proven guy. Uh, and we've seen him do it at a high level for Tampa Bay. Uh, Nick Robertson has a lot of upside. Uh, uh, Riley O'Brien has a lot of upside. Um, you you got uh, uh, King, the lefty from from Texas. There there are other guys too that I haven't even mentioned that um, are in your system that have the potential to help you in relief. Do you think you and um, your associates have been able to attack that issue that's been sitting there that we've all talked about needing to just bring more strikeout power to your staff and to your bullpen as well. You know, I, I know that's been like a, uh, a popular narrative. I, I do think having some swing and miss in your bullpen is important because there's times when you actually need a strikeout, but really your objective is to find guys to get out. And, um, you know, when you look at, at our bullpen from sort of back to front, you touched on a lot of guys that are going to be key in the front side, but really a healthy Helsley is going to matter. Can we get Geo back to where he was prior to uh, 2023? And what's the emergence of JoJo Romero going to look like? And you mentioned Kittredge, but... Those are the guys we sort of focus on right now as our high leverage guys. And hopefully you have enough depth there. And if we're able to add maybe one more piece to that, that should be able to give us some protection throughout the season. And I think, you know, you don't want to fall in love with just strictly roles. But the one thing we really thought was, was interesting about Kittredge was the fact that, you know, he's not afraid to be used in any part of a game. And, and I think that's important um, when you think about really the lineup of our bullpen i've uh, i've talked about geo uh, a, a lot on the show and even written about it only from the standpoint that we all noticed i mean factually there there was a drop in strikeout rate and there there was an increase in the hard hit rate against him last year rather uh, substantial increase what, what is it what do you think the key will be to sort of getting him back to where he was? Is that a concern? Do you think that this is something that can be easily attained? Because, uh, you know, it just wasn't the vintage uh, Gallegos that we witnessed last year. Yeah, I feel a little bit of, of a combination of just a lot of usage and never really being able to take a break. And, you know, last year he ended the season on the I.L., I think that was really helpful for him just to be able to shut it down. I think mentally, physically, he was at a point where he just needed to, to take a step back. This off season, he's been able to, to just focus on getting himself to where he was prior to 2023. And, and, you know, that's really the hope because 
when you think back to 21, 22, here was a guy that could induce a ground ball. He was a guy that could create some swing and miss. He relied heavily on a slider. And, you know, last year it just wasn't there and, and results showed. So, you know, I think him showing up refreshed is probably the most important thing we can see out of him. And, you know, your whole squad will have a full spring training. You won't have to worry about any, you know, uh, WBC uh, disruption. So that's a that's a positive, too, for anybody that's looking to bounce them back and just get into the regular uh, regular routine to work on things. Uh, the one star, listen, wait, I, I love the Sonny Gray signing. I think Kyle Gibson's really underrated. In fact, I've said it on the show, so I'm not sitting here uh, smooching up to you by saying this because I've written it and said it a bunch. I, I don't think, generally speaking, people here realize uh, what a good pitcher Kyle Gibson was last season. And I think he's kind of underrated. So I was pretty fired up about him as well. The guy that I think looms large in this is is Lance Lynn. And I'm glad I have a chance to ask you about this. And I know I saw you at the uh, Red Ribbon uh, Committee meeting, the Hall of Fame meeting. It wasn't a time or place to ask you business questions. But what do you what do you and your people and your dugout staff see in Lance Lynn that gives you hope and encouragement? or confidence even, that he can be a lot better that in 2024 than he was last season? Yeah, I think there are a combination of things went on with him last year. Obviously, uh, gave up a lot of balls that, that uh, left the ballpark. So home runs were definitely scary. But, you know, talking with him even before we signed him to when we signed him, he knows that there were some adjustments he has to make. Um, he felt like he started to, to find that when he was with the Dodgers. And, and overall, I think he just wants to make sure that how he's preparing in terms of, of pre-pitch and pitch is something that matters to him. And I think he got to a point last year where he felt like he might have been showing some of his pitches. And, you know, when, he, when, he, when you do that and you're not throwing 100, you can be pretty predictable. And so – I think he's got to understand the change that pitch mix. Um, speaking with our pitching coach, uh, Dusty Blake, he feels confident that they can, can do that. And uh, so I think we're going into the season with probably a, a little bit more optimism than, than maybe what his numbers showed last year. But overall, he does know he has to do some things different. I wanted to ask you this because this fits into the, the template in terms of uh, the leadership attributes that Gray and Gibson and Lynn can bring to your 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 staff. Um, and I watched a lot of Orioles games last season. And, you know, I saw Kyle Gibson post game time after time after time was really impressed by the way, it's hard to explain. He just conveyed leadership, and I know that the young Orioles starters really looked up to him and went to him a lot. But the idea of leadership and, and uh, clubhouse culture has been a big discussion point this offseason. And here's what I want to ask you. What do you think, when you get to the bottom line, what do you think is required for the Cardinals to have a better clubhouse culture and more leadership and more accountability? Well, I think that the biggest thing for us last year was we, we, we really did have a, a young team. And I think we put a lot of pressure on some of those younger players to A, know how to carry themselves and, and, and B, from a performance standpoint, we were expecting a lot. And when we got off to a slow start, um, obviously – the pressure just grows and mounts. And then the other thing that ends up happening is, you know, you're looking around to, to get some help when you're young. And, you know, I feel like, you know, there's only so much like Goldie and Nolan can do. Obviously, um, Adam was on the IL at the time. And so I definitely felt like there was a void in, in what we were normally expecting in the, in the Cardinal clubhouse. So we definitely targeted – the three individuals you talked about, not only for leadership, but also for experience and also for the understanding of, of what it t- takes to go pole to pole. I think, you know, when, when you go to the minor leagues and, and you finally get the opportunity to play in the big leagues, you think just because it's baseball, it's the same. It's not. It's different. And expectations 
and, and demands are much higher. And then also you, you have that you're dealing with, but also then like, what is a good routine? How should I go through my day? And it's different in Springfield and Memphis than it is in St. Louis. And I just feel like having these guys on our, on our roster, they're definitely going to be able to help some of our younger players. And, you know, I was actually speaking with uh, Lance Lynn just the other day, and he's like, look, my influence will be just as strong on position players as it is on pitchers. And, you know, it was a pretty good, good thing to hear. Yeah, he uh, – I, uh, I enjoyed being around him when he was a Cardinal because, uh, you, you know, he, he's got a lot, a lot of thoughts and a lot to say, and I think he always wanted that. I think he always really wanted to be a leader. Maybe, you know, there were some other people ahead of him, so to speak. But this will be interesting. It really will. Uh, Mo, with, with Matt Carpenter, like I wrote and what I said, I really respect him. He's one of one of my favorite Cardinals during the Bill DeWitt era. Um, but I do wonder, A, what's left there, and B, if his presence means – Pardon the expression, it'll kind of block Alec Burleson, who showed some real improvement in the second half of the season and from what all the reports are, working really hard on his defense and conditioning. Is, is Burleson going to get less of an opportunity because of this? You know, I think time will tell. Um, obviously, we don't want to bring in Carp with that if he's not able to contribute in a positive way. Um, you know, there, there's some things he was working on this off season that we could look at and analyze. So, so there, there is some reason for, for some hope to where he was, uh, you know, back when he was with the Yankees in terms of exit velocity. But overall numbers, I do think there's still space for both those guys. And, you know, in terms of how we divide up playing time, it really comes down to, like, what the rest of the club looks like and how they're playing. I think the one thing we learned last year was, you know, trying to maintain guys being fresh and also trying to make sure we create opportunity. And, you know, we definitely don't want Burleson up in, in the big leagues and only getting uh, three at-bats a week. So we're cognizant of that. Uh, I, what kind of, um, you know, from when, year one to year two, we saw uh, some really good improvement from Nolan Gorman. I mean, he's hardly a finished product, but he made – major strides and I know the you know the the back pain was an issue but you know given what we saw there uh what are reasonable expectations for Jordan Walker as he goes into his second season you know I would have actually just saw him recently but I I think like expectations are high and I think they're they're fair to be high I think from an offensive standpoint, obviously he, he has a good eye for strike zone. Um, you know, I think last year we probably put a little too much pressure on him trying to get him to lift out of the gate rather than just get comfortable. I think this off season he's been able to, to, to really just be himself. And his main focus really has been his defense. And so he's been down in Jupiter for the last couple of months working with Okendo on that. And so I think we're all excited to see what we have there, but I do think that's sort of reasonable to use Gorman as an example of, you know, what you look like as, as you, in your freshman year versus what you look like in your sophomore year. I, I want to, speaking of your young core, um, you know, I, I think Paul Goldschmidt, uh, talking about the veterans for a second, uh, you know, Goldschmidt, his underlying metrics were actually really positive last season. He didn't lose any bat speed or anything. Maybe he needs to pull the ball more. I don't know. But I think he's going to be fine. Arenado was was dealing with back issues, but there was a there was a drop off. And I know it probably wasn't the happiest season for him. So. If you've had some, before I get back to the young core, uh, if you've had conversations with uh, Goldschmidt and Arenado, um, do you think both of them, after a very tough season, because losing stinks for everybody, do you think they're in a good place coming into 2024, yeah. just having ha having dealt with all of that? Yeah, I do. I, I think uh, last year was frustrating for everybody involved. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I think we learned some things from it, and I think uh, both those guys are excited to show last year was an outlier and not the norm. And so you you 
take those two, and you have other veterans as well. I mean, Tommy Edmond is not a, a, a kid anymore. He's a younger veteran, but he's been around since 2019. But Gorman and Brendan Donovan and Newt Barr and Walker, um, that that meld of the, uh, the the established veterans. Contreras is an established veteran. The the you know, and then and then you have your younger veterans maturing. Is that one of the reasons why whatever interest you may have uh, you may have received in Gorman and Donovan and Newt Barr specifically? But I guess you could put Edmund in there. Is that a is that the reason why you know you just did not want to part with any of those four guys? Or Walker would be a fifth guy that I just mentioned. Uh, you must have really good thoughts about what your core will do, the young and the old melded together, what they'll be able to do in 2024. Yeah, I think all those guys you mentioned are you know very exciting. Their upside is tremendous. The adjustments they're making, I think they, the the big test. For, for this young group is, you know, can they stay healthy? Can they stay on the field? You think about the great players in the game, they they can they understand 162 over 187, and, and they play that out. And, and so I think the biggest difference from last year to what we hope we see this year is being able to keep that group on the field, contributing, and uh, performing at a high level. What? How will this year be different for Wilson Contreras? We don't have to review last year. You know, it was it was what it was. Uh, what What do you expect uh, this year? Is it it's clearly will be a smoother process. But what has you looking forward to year number two of Wilson Contreras as a Cardinal? I think the biggest thing for him will be he doesn't have to like prove himself. I think last year when he joined the club. He felt like a lot of pressure to fill Yachty's shoes, and, and I think that just the weight of that just created a lot of early struggles. I think the second half of the season is what we hope we see from day one, and uh, that's really how we're approaching it this year. He, uh, it, it was kind of fun to watch him. There was a, there, there were a lot of things to be, you know, frustrated about as a fan or whatever, but uh, especially once. He just hit his stride offensively, man. He uh, he's a pr- pretty exciting guy at the plate. He really is. Is it going to be easier for him working with the pitchers this year and sort of all getting on the same page? I think so. Um, there's some things that we'll try to help him with to do that, but I think just knowing each pitcher now is going to be a big help. I mean, we think about like you know, two fifths of our rotation last year wasn't really even in camp, um, and, and I think that you know added to. Uh, some of our struggles as well. So, you know, overall, our confidence going into 2024 with Wilson is, is very high. What, uh, what is it about Daniel Descalso? And obviously you've known him uh, for a long time, given his playing career here and his rise through the system. What is it about Daniel Descalso that you believe made him uh, a, a really good choice to be the next bench coach? You know, I think uh, one of the most important things about a bench coach is just the relationship you have with the manager. Because in a lot of ways, it's almost like your chief of staff, just someone that's like helping keep everything running on time, communicating, and 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 really sort of having a, a touch and a feel for everything that's going on in that clubhouse. And I think, you know, Danny, not that far removed from from his playing days, understands that and. Uh, you know, he, he knows Ollie really well, remembers him when uh, he was breaking in as a young manager. So I think this their relationship is very solid. And I think just when you think about what Danny understands about St. Louis baseballs and, and what's expected, he'll be an ideal fit for uh, Ollie and our team. I, 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 I wanted to talk about Ali here. You know, I, I've been uh, I've been impressed with the way he has uh, you know publicly responded uh, to a lot of things. But you know, the idea with the Adrian Molina uh, being you know part of the Cardinals uh, support uh, staff in 2024 with Descalso coming aboard. Both of these guys have managerial aspirations. And I did have a, a, a chance, uh, you know, privately to talk to Ali Marmol about that. And I, and I was, you know, I, 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 listen, he, he, maybe he's a great actor. Maybe, maybe he doesn't really feel this way. But I, 
I, he seems to be awfully determined, and he also seems to be 100% uh, embracing of what, what, what the things Molina and Descalso can help the Cardinals do. Um, can you tell us, it's a long question, I apologize, can you tell us from the time Ali Marmol, when you, know, you guys go through that living hell in 2023, Number one, how do you think that's going to make him better? And number two, just his state of mind uh, compared to last year and then, you know, having that refresh going into 2024. Well, I think he's in a, in a really good headspace. Look, we, we all understand that, that from a performance standpoint, last year was not good for anyone. Um, as I stated earlier, we, we hope we all have learned some things from that. And, you know, look, Ollie's been part of this organization since 2007. So he understands the history of it. He understands what somebody like a Yadier Molina means to the franchise. But he also understands what it takes to do the job and what's required of the job. And he's confident in his skills. And as, as he and I joke, we, you, know, you never want to have a job where you're looking over your shoulder. You want to have a job that you believe you're, you're capable of doing and one that you know you can be successful at, and Ollie knows that with the Cardinals. And so we both are entering this year with the hope that we can right our ship, and uh, that's going to be our plan. Uh, how much – just a couple more things for you, Mo, unless you have to scramble. Uh, just let just let me know when it's time to run. Uh, John Mazalek with us. We know the voice, but just in case you, you joined us, uh, President of Baseball Operations, it's nice to have him on. Um, what what kind what kind of contributions so far have uh, has uh, Heim Bloom made as a as a consultant because he's a very very interesting addition and uh, j- just for what he can kind of bring to the operation is what has he been able to do so far it's awfully early I realize that yeah it's it's uh, you know we're we're rounding turn one at, at most but I, I would say that you know he's he's trying to just get an understanding of really our operation, um, trying to meet as many people as possible right now. I mean, the purpose of bringing him in is, is to really have someone give us an independent view of some of the things we do. And, and do we do them well? Are there areas for improvement? What can we do to change to make that happen? And, you know, he brings all the wealth of experience. And he brings experience from a small market team in Tampa Bay to a large market team in Boston. So I feel he's, like, really calibrated on sort of understanding – what's expected now you know know, trying to create change or pointing it out is is going to really be the trick but the goal of all this is is to ultimately uh improve our operation and i think given that the team i've been with the group of people i've been working with um has been you know really the same names and faces for a long time and so i just felt like it was a great opportunity to to really take a refresh look at, at where we are are there? The, I know you never say never, but uh, do you think you're, uh, especially if this latest uh, uh, transaction goes through and it's not official yet, but if that goes through, are you, you think you're pretty much set roster wise um, as you go into spring training or even during spring training? Do you anticipate anything else? Um, hard to say, and you know, I, I think like answering that in, in a yes or no answer is not really helpful. I think the. The approach we always take is there's there's always opportunities to try to improve and you know we'll consider those and, and debate them internally and see what makes sense for us. But you know I, I do feel like we we have a lot of confidence in our roster coming in. We feel like we've added some depth that will give us some protection we didn't have last year. But you know overall uh, that's why you play the game, right? Um, so that's the exciting part about uh, getting spring training underway next week. How big is the hunger factor, for lack of a better term, as far as everybody wanting that redemption? Uh, yeah, a lot of people up. have asked me that. I, I, you know, it's been a long time since we've lost. So, um, you know, I, I think a lot of us take a lot of pride in, in, in what we have been able to accomplish. Last year was, was uh, something we want to forget. But rather than just trying to forget, you, most importantly, you try to learn from it, and, and hopefully we have. Well, I, I, it was really good of you to come on, and um, I, um, I think your team's definitely better positioned. Um, 
going into spring training. I mean, based on how it ended 2023, you know, and uh, – what that's going to mean in the win-loss total, I, I think, there, you, you know, and I'm not, again, I'm not being a phony. I've written this and said it. You know, there are a lot of factors that are actually, I, I view as, you know, being, you know, at worst, cautiously optimistic about. I, I think there's some good things that have gone on here, and um, I, I think the Cardinals are going to bounce back. I, I just don't, and you didn't ask for my opinion, by the way, so sorry. But <laughs> I, I'm I think, still on, uh, you know. Yeah, I know. I, I know. It's just a, it's just a matter. Are you, you, listen, you're definitely going to be improved, and I'm not even going to say the, the smart aleck thing of like, well, you couldn't be any worse. So you know, I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying I really believe you'll be improved. How much I don't know yet. I mean, there's still a lot of things that got to fit together, and but at least uh, at least an effort has been made. I know a lot of people wanted you to go into the deep end for starting pitching. Um, that's just not the way it's been here. Um, I understand what to expect there, and um, but uh, three starting pitchers um, that that can provide some really valuable parts, I think that, that was a great start to the offseason. So for whatever it's worth, um, moving in the right direction. Thank you. I, I certainly hope so. Thank you. And, Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll catch up soon. All right. Thanks, Mo. That's John Mazzei, like president of baseball operations here on the Bernie Show. Now, I know what I'm going to do. You know, people would say, oh, well, you were just asking me these little kids he faced questions. No, I wasn't. I always have, by the way, I always have conversations. I don't do interrogations because there's just no point in it. I don't, like, perform. You know, it's just I, I got things on my mind I want to ask. And though you say, well, you're telling them you think they're going to be better, that's because you're, you know, you, you, know, he's, you, you need him for access. No, actually, I don't. Um, I don't at all. How many times have you heard him on the show? I say what I want to say, and I'll continue to say what I want to say. But if you do listen to the show, if you do read me at Danny Mac, uh, scoopsdannymac.com, in fact, I've done a sequence of columns there. I think I've done nine in all reasons why I am cautiously optimistic about the Cardinals. And I went in depth in a lot of things that no, that I'm convinced no one else has given a lot of thought to. So what I said to him then, just now, I've said on, this air, on these airwaves and in my Internet space as a writer, and none of that is new. I just don't know how much better they'll be. And um, that's what it's going to come down to. But if you go by projections, and granted, the, the, we all believe the Cubs have another move or two left in them. But if you go by projections, you know, fan graphs, for example, the team wins above replacement projections. You know, they have the Cardinals as the best team in the Central. That's subject to change. Uh, I'm kind of surprised at some of the projections out there. Um, none of them blow you away in terms of win totals. And so uh, I'm acknowledging the obvious. I mean, who the hell's going to have a projection that has them winning 95 games? But I've seen some that have them winning in the high 80s. And uh, after winning 71, you get yourself to 88 or 89. And I'm not saying that should be the ultimate goal. I'm not saying that at all. Don't put words in my mouth. But if you can make that much improvement, I think you do have a chance to win the NL Central. I know you got a better chance to win the NL Central with the Milwaukee Brewers trading Corbin Burns to Baltimore, and in my opinion, getting getting a light return for, I know he's going in his walk year, but this guy won the Cy Young in 2021. He's received Cy Young votes four years in a row. He is a legitimate ace. And, you know, when we look at uh, Corbin Burns uh, leaving this division, Brandon Woodruff has left the division because he hurt his shoulder. He had surgery. The Brewers didn't give him an offer, so he's a free agent. Probably not going to pitch in 2024. Hey, don't forget, um, they also traded Adrian Hauser to the Mets. Uh, they, they basically said bye-bye to Eric Lauer. That's a team that has lost four starting pitchers, two of whom were co-aces. And that was Milwaukee's enduring strength that starting rotation. Now it's, well, you got Freddie Peralta, you got Wade Miley who gets hurt a lot. You got Colin Ray, maybe one of the, maybe the one pitcher they got from Baltimore. DL Hall, maybe he'll be a starter. 
after that, uh, I don't know. Do you know? It's kind of a scramble, isn't it? So when the Cardinals signed three starting pitchers, and they're all legitimate guys, it's just a matter of how good Lance Lynn will be. But, you know, when they've increased, they're going to dramatically increase the number of quality starts they get from last year and the innings they get from their starters from last year. And the fact they've gotten rid of so much of the rot on the pitching staff, and I do like the depth pieces that they've assembled for this bullpen to go with what they have. You know, it's just not crazy to look at the Cardinals and say, you know, all things considered, they're in pretty good shape right now. Perfect? No. Ideal? No. Could they do more? Yes. But that's why I say, as, of, as we sit here right now, all things considered, they're in pretty good shape. Because when uh, you've added three legitimate major league starting pitchers and a team you're trying to chase has subtracted four starting pitchers from their rotation over the same period of time, yeah, it makes a difference. And I got some other stuff on that coming up. Um, The Cubs, I think, are still the team to beat because I I say that anticipation of, of a big move or two. But we don't know that for sure, and uh, we just have to wait and see how it plays out because obviously the, uh, the whole free agent thing is hinging on a, on a few big names, and you know I think the Cubs will be in there slinging for uh, one or two of those guys at least, right? 